Do you sometimes get iPhone photos that are out of focus? If so, you're definitely not alone. While the autofocus of the iPhone usually works fine, there are also times when it doesn't work. And that's when you end up with blurry photos that you can't possibly use. But it really doesn't have to be that way. My name is Emil Pakarklis. I'm the founder of iPhone Photography School. And in this short video, I'll reveal three secret iPhone camera features for getting perfect focus. Once you start using these three secret features, your iPhone photos will always turn out tack sharp. Now, if you can't hear me, please tap on this video to turn on the sound, and then we can get started. One of the most common reasons iPhone photos end up blurry is because the focus is not set correctly. So, how do you set focus on the iPhone? Actually, it's really simple. Let me show you how to do it. So, when you first open the camera app of the iPhone, you'll see that the iPhone has already picked somewhat of an average focus for this photo. And we have these beautiful flowers in the foreground, as well as the street buildings in the background, but neither of them is really in focus because the iPhone has tried to make sure that as many parts of the photo as possible are in focus, and as a result, nothing is really in focus. So in order to fix that, all you have to do is use your finger and tap it on the screen where you want the focus to be. So right now, I'm going to tap on this flower in the foreground, and you'll see this yellow box appear, and that means that the focus is now set on the flowers in the foreground. Now, if I want to set the focus on the buildings in the background instead, all I have to do is tap my finger on these buildings in the background, and you'll see that now these buildings are in focus, but the flowers in the foreground are no longer sharp. Now, when I set the focus here on these buildings in the background, the image also became a little bit darker, and that's because when you're setting focus, you're also adjusting how dark or how bright the photo is going to be. So if that's a problem, it's really easy to fix, and all you have to do is simply swipe your finger up or down the screen like this, and you can make the photo darker or brighter if you need to do that. So now that I'm happy with both focus and exposure, I'm gonna go ahead and take another photo, and if we compare these two photos side by side, you'll see that in the first photo, the flowers in the foreground are nice and sharp, but the buildings in the background are out of focus. While in the second photo, uh, the buildings in the background are in focus, but the flowers in the foreground are no longer sharp. So the bottom line is this. If you want to make sure that your iPhone photos turn out great, you should always set the focus yourself. Otherwise, you're leaving your photos up to chance. Sometimes they'll work out, at other times they won't, but you will not get consistent results. Now, the technique I just shared with you works really great, but there's one problem. Every time you take a shot, or every time something changes in the scene, the iPhone will automatically reset back to autofocus, and whatever changes you made to focus and exposure will simply disappear. Now, obviously it's a problem, especially if you want to take several photos where the focus is the same, but luckily there's a very easy way to fix that, and that is by locking the focus. So let me show you how to do that. So in order to lock the focus, all you have to do is simply tap and hold your finger where you want the focus to be set. So I want to set the focus on this wall in the background. So I'm gonna simply tap and hold my finger there for a couple of seconds until the letters A, E, A, F lock appear at the top of the screen. And that tells me that both focus and exposure are now locked. And no matter how many photos I take, and no matter what kind of changes happen in the scene, I can be confident that the focus will remain unchanged until I switch it back off. Now, this technique is particularly useful when you're expecting a great photo opportunity and you want to be prepared in advance. For example, I'm sitting on the side of this little beautiful street and I know that eventually some people will walk past me. And when that happens, I want to be ready to take the photo. And because of that, I'm locking the focus in advance, and I'm gonna already frame the shot, and I'll shoot it through this beautiful green grass in the foreground so that my subjects will be partially obscured. So now, I simply have to sit here and wait until someone walks past me. 
Okay, so now I think the moment is right. So I'm gonna take several photos and you can see that no matter how many photos I take, the focus remains locked and the beautiful green grass in the foreground is still blurred out. And these are the kind of photos I can only take by locking the focus of my iPhone. Next, I'd like to share with you an advanced technique for setting focus accurately in your iPhone photos. And this technique is particularly useful when your subjects are small or they're far away and you want to be absolutely sure you've set the focus the right way. So if we look at the scene, you'll see that my wife and my daughter are uh, standing here on this beautiful street. And I'd like to set focus on them to make sure that their faces are perfectly sharp. But if I simply tap my finger on them, uh, I cannot be absolutely sure where the focus goes. Maybe the iPhone does a good job and the focus goes on the subjects. Or perhaps the focus is instead set somewhere into the distant background. And I don't want that. So in order to accurately set focus on my subjects, what I can do is use two fingers to zoom in and to get really close to my subjects like so. And then I can tap and hold my finger right on the face of my subject like so until the letters A, E, A, F lock appear. And now I've locked the focus on my subject. But I'm not gonna take a photo while I'm zoomed in like this because this photo wouldn't be of high quality. The iPhone uses digital zoom when you zoom in too much and what happens is that you lose photo quality if you take zoomed in shots like this. So instead I'm gonna use two fingers again, this time to zoom out, and I'm gonna zoom all the way out, but you'll see that the letters A, E, A, F lock are still there, which means that the focus is still set on the face of my subject. And if I now take some photos, you'll see that my subjects are still perfectly sharp. And I'm confident that their faces will be in focus, even though they're far away. And this is how you can accurately set focus when your subjects are far away and when it's really important that they are perfectly sharp. Now, as you can see from the techniques I just shared, the iPhone camera looks really simple on the surface, but when you start digging deeper, it's really not that simple. There are so many hidden camera features and camera settings that you probably don't know about, and I could only share a handful of them in a short video like this. And to make things worse, it's not enough to simply learn about all the different iPhone camera features you also have to understand how to use each one of them in different photography scenarios. We're talking about different light conditions, different photography subjects, and even different genres and styles of photography. But here's the good news. Once you really understand iPhone photography, you'll be able to take the kind of photos that nobody would even believe were taken with the iPhone. And that's why I created iPhone Photo Academy which is an online course teaching you everything there's to know about iPhone photography. So right next to this video, you'll find more information about my full iPhone Photo Academy course. If you'd like to use your iPhone to take stunning photos that you'll be proud to look at many years later, and if you'd like to do it without having to carry your bulky camera, then please take a look at my full iPhone Photo Academy course. There's more information right next to this video so take a look and I really hope to see you there.